Kyle Van Putty from Van Putty Gardens is our guest. North Avenue in Greece. Open this weekend, 4th of July, limited hours. Uh, we have a link to their website, vanputty.com, at propertysourceradio.com. We also just put up a link to these uh, Fatherzilla plants. Found a couple good images, and they're on the website at propertysourceradio.com if you want to take a look. Gilla. Father Gilla. What did I say? Zilla? Zilla. Father like Zilla. Zilla. <laughs> Father, Father Gilla. Father somebody. <laughs> So before I went to break, I mentioned my hedgerow. Now, right now in my backyard, I just have a plain chain link fence. And Stop. <laughs> hedgerow. Hedgerow. A row of bushes or shrubbery. For, for oh. privacy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. A head row. A head. Hedge. Hedge. Hedgerow. 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 I thought you said hedgerow. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it sound like hedgerow? I, didn't, I don't know. I just assumed... I, <laughs> Well, he knows what it is. Yeah, so. the term it didn't. I didn't. Yeah. All right, I'm so the, I'm the nitwit. Hedge here's the row. problem that I'm having. Okay, my backyard pitches okay. pretty bad. All right, and rather than bring in a whole bunch of dirt and raise the grade in the winter time when the snow melts, I get a lake in my backyard okay. that you can swim in. Yes, but I want to put plants along the back, but I'm afraid with all that water back there that whatever I put is going to get oversaturated and not grow. Is there anything specifically that I could put back there that would hold up in the water and that I right. wouldn't have to necessarily raise the whole grade of my backyard? And There are a couple plants that you could use. Um, the traditional hedgerow plants being arborvitae, upright juniper and tall hedge will not work in that situation. They will, you know, we okay. call it they're, they're going to have wet feet and they're going to die. Uh, now what you could use, there's a plant called a dappled willow. Now the, the dappled willow, it is part of the willow family. It's got beautiful green and white foliage. And, uh, the only problem with that is, is it gets as sometimes as wide as it gets tall. So you need some room for it. Okay. You know what I mean? It won't be this three foot narrow hedge, you know, right. it'll be more like a five foot wide. They love the water. Oh. Uh, there are, uh, there's another plant called variegated dogwood. Hmm. That can also take what we call wet feet, you know, wet situations, and they, they will also do well. Again, both of these are deciduous. Okay. Okay, meaning they lose their leaves in the winter, Steve. Okay. I got you. Thank <laughs> you. Much, I got to make sure I keep oh, Steve up gosh. to speed here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, this is quiz, there, are no, there are no evergreen, evergreen uh, hedgerows that will live in that situation unless we were to build a berm first. Okay. Okay. So I could build a berm and then put back, uh, you know, any kind of evergreen, or I could yes. put in something like this and not have to worry. Exactly, about Exactly, you have a choice. Awesome, awesome. See, I would just hire you to do it all. Yeah, <laughs> that's we like guys like build you. me yeah. a berm. <laughs> build me a berm. I have a question on hedge rows since we're on the topic. Okay, uh, I've got a I've got a one on my back lot line for privacy, but it will not thicken up because people in my neighborhood. What I found is they over plant okay. in shady areas okay. and it's absolutely mind boggling. It drives me nuts because I've got, I've got these hedges. I've got a hot tub in the backyard and my wife and I, you know, entertain the neighbors because this things won't thicken up. So okay. what, what kind of plan is it? Get a fence. <laughs> <laughs> no, cause there are windows. The neighbor's windows yeah. look down. It's, not high. Like <laughs> well, well, what, it's either an arborvitae. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, they're about 15 feet tall now. Okay. And, and I keep letting them grow, and I miracle grow them, but they only green on my side because I cut nine oak trees out of my yard okay. to get some sun in. Okay. The neighbor has not. They still have a canopy of oak trees well, covering the I see that all the time, and they will never thicken up on the okay. other side unless they get more sun. But if okay. your side's good, then I would say... Any way I could get my side even thicker, just keep a uh, well, miracle growing? You could you could prune the tops a okay. little bit to stop some of the top growth. See, they're, they're reaching for the sun. Yes. So if you take away, let's say, a foot or two foot off the top, that would give the lower part more energy to possibly okay. thicken up. That's what I thought. Yeah. I did that two years ago. Now that extra two feet's back again. Yeah. So I've got to just and chop it'll, them It'll again. be a maintenance thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When That's people want to buy hedges, can you buy like a six or eight or ten foot hedge? Sure you can. Already up that high? Yes, you can. Yeah. 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 They're just different we, prices, right? Well, that's the whole thing. The larger you go, the more expensive it is. And, and in Pat's situation, can you can you supplement hedges you have with new hedges, or do you have to get the hedges to grow? No. Usually when you start taking out one or two out of the middle of a hedge, yeah. it's just not going to match. It's not going to look good. You wouldn't like it. You know, So you're better off or trying to salvage what you have. Maybe, Steve, you, maybe you were talking, referring to adding another row, like having a double row. Well, no, like sticking about? hedges in where the spaces okay. are, okay. Filling, it, filling in. Yeah, it's it's actually one the second row is a good wall. idea, but yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, this is actually, yeah. if you can visualize it, one solid wall of, of hedges, but 
the other side is bare. Okay. It's, it's very sparse, you know? Yeah. Um, my side's a little thicker because I, don't, I have more light. Right. Um, so that's what I've got a problem with. But uh, it's all right. It turns a neighbor on. I know that. Well, and that's, uh, that's the important thing. You know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Van Putty is with us. VanPutty.com. You can get a link at our website at propertysourceradio.com. We're here till 10 o'clock this morning on the 2nd of July. Uh, Sports Radio 950 ESPN. I'll be down in uh, Nantucket in a couple of weeks. My favorite place on earth. Nice. Go down there every year. And hydrangea are huge down there. You've been, you know what? They're beautiful blue plants. Right. And I would love to be able to grow them here. Or I'd love to have Julie be able to grow them here. <laughs> yes. But they don't seem to grow the same. Okay. Is well, there a reason for that? Is it the salt air? Is it? No, no, no. It's, no? it's the soil. Yeah. It's the soil. You need to make sure. And, and as far as hydrangeas go in the last five years, the, uh, the hydrangeas that are available now in different colors, different sizes, mm -hmm. different color leaves, it's really unbelievable. I mean, we have like 15 different hydrangeas that, that you can buy. Uh, but with hydrangeas and with like rhododendrons, mm. they require you to amend the soil. Okay. You need to add compost to the soil. Oh. Because if you want good flowering, I mean, well, the, yeah. the leaves are going to grow green, yeah, no, yeah. no problem. But if you want good flowers, you need to amend the soil. And then to really get that deep blue, mm. you have to use aluminum sulfate. Okay. Okay. And uh, or triple superphosphate. There's there's two uh, fertilizers that you have to use. You need to put it around the base of the plant, and then that's how you get the true, really blue flower. My favorite. Oh, One yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The hydrangea. Yeah, yeah it's the, gorgeous. The blue, the blue it's a deep. nice puffy. It, yeah. No, it's just. just it's a nice best. plant, and yeah. it's not a high maintenance plant. There's not a lot of insects that attack it. You just have to make sure you fertilize it yeah. properly so you get the good flowers. Mm. This uh, interview time has flown by with you, Kyle. I'm glad you could join us today. I appreciate that. You're open on Saturday, Sunday, today, tomorrow, and Monday. Limited hours, but if you need to uh, need to get into a van putty, they're open. Uh, what What are people going to be getting today? Why would you stop by today? Well, you know, in late June, early July, what we see is a lot of people preparing for the graduation parties, uh -huh. uh, a lot of weddings in July and August. So what people will do is uh, they'll come in and they'll buy combination planners. You know, you uh -huh. come in, you buy uh -huh. a, an 18 inch uh, pot of flowers that's ready to go. So, you know, put them around the patios that we were just talking Great. about. So, that's what people are doing is just finishing off what they started earlier this spring. Mm. Well, we're finally into the good weather, and it, it's uh, it's it's great to see Julie out in the garden. I've I've actually grown some herbs on my own, and the uh, the rosemary is a little bit touchy, but the cilantro. I made my first batch of salsa last weekend. Oh, yeah. and I bet I it was cilantro. delicious. It was great. Oh man, I love cilantro. Herbs are really easy to grow, and yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. I can grow them. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so you know? Steve can grow them. Anyone can grow. Anyone them. can grow them. Kyle, thanks for joining us. Have a great holiday weekend. We'd love to have you back sometime. I appreciate it, Steve. Thank Kyle you. Kyle Van Putty, Van Putty dot com, Van Putty Gardens. Everybody knows them in Greece, and we have a link to their website at propertysourceradio.com.